Welcome, uh, the viewers of Blue Smooth TV. Where is this Innes Seiben from the UK? And he's just finished his gig on the Kulenburg Blues Festival. Uh, first of all, how was it there on the, on the stage? It was great. We really enjoyed it. We just uh, came straight off the, uh, the ferry, straight to, uh, to, to Kulenburg. There was lots of road work, so we, um, Aria, our agent, um, she gave us some special um, details to get in. We got here just in time, guitar straight on and, and straight on with the gig, which is how I like it. I don't like hanging about too much, cause, um, especially if there's too much of that about, you know. So uh, straight in, straight to work. And afterwards? Uh, I think we're going to go and have some food now. And um, tomorrow we play in um, Hyakugo Land, I think. And next week we're playing in Oystervik, Oystervik um, Sphinct. I think that's how you <laughs> Oystervik Sphinx. Um, so yeah, so we've got a few in the Netherlands. And then we're back in October, we've got some more dates in the Netherlands in, in October, um, 8th, 9th, 10th of October time. Um, you'll have to look on our MySpace um, site to find out what the dates are, uh, where, the, where they are. But, um, but we always love playing in the Netherlands because it's, A, we've got great agent, you know, DDA agency and, and it's just, I love the audiences here. And it's, you know, it's a nice small country and you don't have to drive too far. Good beer, good people, what can I say? In a Seiben, we, um, obvious your records are, you know, a huge database, as we know. And um, first of all, your name is a little bit strange to us. So that's a good thing because we notice it right. there about. We love the music, but I missed the keyboard player, the Hammond player today on stage. So did I. Yeah, um, you know, unfortunately, um, we've last week we were on tour in Germany. He was with us, but his son um, does, um, how do you say it? He rides horses, eventing, um, like show jumping. And this weekend he's doing a competition, which means if he, if he gets through, he, goes, he, he rides for the Olympic, for England in the Olympics. So he said, guys, I'm sorry, I've got to go and be with my son, you know, which, I, you know, you can understand. So Yeah, with 2012 coming up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, so, you know, Tim, we miss, miss. It's two different bands, you know, when, when Tim's playing the keyboards, I can lay back a lot more. Gives me a lot more. Well, all of us, it gives us a lot more scope. Um, so. <laughs> trio we have to play you know more <laughs> you did your job because you you went uh, off stage a couple of times seeking up the audience well yeah, I mean that's 
you know, I just think when, when you're playing, when you go to see a band, you know, you don't want to just see somebody staring at their shoes, you know, you want to see somebody. And I, the reason I do it is because I dig the audience and I, I want to get down there and play to them, play for them. So um, sometimes I wonder how I'm going to get back up on the stage, but, uh, you know, I worry about that when I'm down there, you know. Well, you get it. Yeah. But um, it's all about playing to the people and, and it's the people that buy the records, you know, and that's, that's why we do it, that's why we love it. Can you describe your own style? Of the, the style you are a favorite from in your own words? Um, I guess when I was a young kid, I started off listening to BB King and Otis Rush, and, and and along the way, it's like a big long journey. I found Rory Gallagher and I found Led Zeppelin, and and then I found Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye. So I wandered off up this road. Then I found Charlie Parker and John Coltrane. I wandered up this road for a little bit, but I was still going up the BB King road, you know. I found, you know, I listened to a lot of reggae, um, all different music, you know, I love to listen, I love Mahler, I love Mozart, there's, you know, there isn't, there's only two kinds of music, good music and bad music, you know, um, and I don't really, um, I can't really say that I've got any preferences, you know, um, when I'm at home I listen to Bach and I listen, at the same time I listen to the Sex Pistols and and Muse and um, John Lee Hooker and Robert Johnson. It, I love it. Wow! songs on stage and if I close my eyes it just as I saw of here Rory Gallagher play <laughs> well you know I'm, I've always been a big fan of Rory um, and I got to know I, I started I was I was asked a few years ago to go to America and do some Rory Gallagher tribute shows you know at some festivals so um, I got to meet Donald Rory's brother Donald who was his road manager and we became very good friends um, we, and then we went, the three of us, the trio, this year we went to Ballyshannon in Ireland to, to play at the Rory Festival. Actually, Donald asked us to play for, um, they unveiled a statue of Rory in Ballyshannon, and we played at the party, the, you know, the after show party. So uh, we spent a week down there and, oh. So isn't that strange for me to notice that? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, Rory is, such a big influence on my playing um, and unfortunately I never met him, never played with him, never, you know, but um, Donald says, says the same thing, you know, about the, um, the influences and whatever and the same as that Rory would just play until his sweat, you know, sweated and that's how he took, you know, Rory's guitar had all the, the varnish off he had a very unusual blood group and, and so the acid from his sweat, that's how come Donald told me, you know, that that's why the, the guitar ended up like that. But um, I guess also because I've got Irish blood in me as well, so Irish and Scottish. So we've got that kind of background as well. But uh, Rory was one of the first, you know, guitar players that I really... Rory and B.B. King, Roy Buchanan, Otis Rush, they were the guys that I, when I was 12, 13 years old, but if I could just have a little bit, be as little bit as good as that. Have you own goals for blues, or for music in, in general? Uh, did you set any for you? Because I want to be huge in. Europe, America, um, give up my day job. <laughs> you know, I played for, for a while, I played in Robert Plant's band, you know, had a Led Zeppelin and, and I toured with him for a year. Went all around America and South America. Played in Amsterdam, actually, we played at the Paradiso in 1993, I think. 
Um, and I've done a lot of, of tours with American blues acts and whatever. So I know that um, you can stick to your, you know, stay true to who you are as a musician and you're not going to make much money, you know, playing blues, which is what I've done, you know, and I, I've, I've done sessions playing on singles and things, you know, for pop bands, but I don't want to be in a pop band playing in something I don't believe in. So I'd rather do my own thing and play what I believe. Studio work? Studio work, if it's around, gets less and less these days, you know, but um, I'm, you know, I tr try and stay true to myself and, and, and to what I musically believe in, you know, I'm not going to prostitute myself to just for big bucks, you know. <laughs> That's ad admirable. <laughs> yeah. If it gets your pills paid. Well, you know, I'm used to living in Port. I've got a rich wife, you know. <laughs> Well, in a, um, next to you, the couple of the, the couple of, do you have a new CD coming ahead, or is it still? Uh We haven't. The, the newest CD is the box set, which is the live um, album. Yeah, we called it the box set because we recorded it in in a town called Box in England. So people are expecting it to be, you know, like ten albums. <laughs> afraid it's only one. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a shame that. Michael Caden's played an album live from hell because he li <laughs> he, he lives in hell. he lives in a place like it's called hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. You know, it's um, I think I saw um, um, Steve, our bass player, showed me a review of the album in in an English magazine the other day, and it said, "Whatever you do, don't think you're buying you know you're buying a box set because this is only one <laughs> album." You know? So it's a friend of ours um, called Jeff who said, "Oh, I'll call it the box set," but. Uh, But there you go. There you go. Well, we're going to watch you closely and um, Thank you. make something beautiful that's for YouTube. And I wish you got a lot of fun on stage and may your goals be achieved Thank sometime. You very